just so thankful and just to see another day. Amen. Amen. Thankful to see another day. Amen. Thankful for God's new mercies. Yes. Hallelujah. So, first of all, I just want to thank uh, Pastor Mark and Pastor Jackie for just allowing me to be able to come speak today. Um, it's definitely, definitely been an interesting journey, um, but I'm just thankful that, you know, the Lord has placed me with them because it's, it's very important that you don't try to do life alone. Amen. Because if you try to do life alone, I, I, I get that it's just me and Jesus, <laughs> but <laughs> that, that, that it's just me and Jesus attitude. It just, right. yeah, that, that, that just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Amen. Amen. God created us to be relational, so I'm thankful for them. I'm thankful for just the opportunity. So if you would, turn with me to the book of Jonah, if you have your Bibles today. The book of Jonah. And I'll be reading from the ESV version. Jonah chapter 1. So Father, we thank you for just allowing us to be able to come together. We ask, Lord, that you fill us afresh with the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we may know you better. We ask that you reveal to us the hope that we have in you. We ask that you reveal to us the inheritance that you find in your people. And we thank you, Father, for the inexpressible power that we have on the inside of us, that same power that resurrected Jesus from the dead. And so, Father, we just come to you asking you to teach us, reveal to us what we need to know for this present moment and for this present time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So, Jonah chapter 1, I'm going to read verses 1 through 6. And it says, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise. Go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it, for their evil has come up before me. But Jonah rose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea. And there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship threatened to break up. Then the mariners were afraid, and each cried out to his God. And they hurled the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. But Jonah had gone down into the inner part of the ship and had lain down and was fast asleep. <laughs> so the captain came and said to him, What do you mean, you sleeper? Arise. Call out to your God. Perhaps the God will give a thought to us that we may not perish. And I want to talk today about managing the new season. Amen. Amen. Managing the new season. Jesus. So Pastor Jackie, she came and she spoke to us last Sunday about um, get us getting ready to cross over. And essentially what she was speaking from was she was talking about the commission that God was giving Joshua. Mm -hmm. But with the commission, it comes responsibility. Yes. Amen. So we can't, we can't expect to have the commission. The commission sounds good, <laughs> but that responsibility is real. Mm -hmm. And so with every fresh commission, it comes a new level of responsibility. It comes a new level of management, right? Amen. And so I want to speak about managing the new season. And now we, we all know the story Jonah, but just how Pastor Jackie, when she comes up and says, let's not get too familiar with it today. Right. Let's, let's approach it with a fresh perspective because I believe the Lord wants to give us something fresh. That's good. Because grace is forward moving. Grace is always trying to give us something fresh. The Father is always trying to give us something new out of his grace. That's, good. That's why we can approach him with a, with a spirit of familiarity. We can be familiar with him because his character doesn't change. But we can't get too familiar with his works. That's good. 
with the way that he does things because if we do, we'll miss it. Right. Amen. Amen. We'll miss it. Amen. And so it says, now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai. Now, it's interesting that it says the word of the Lord came to Jonah. That means the word didn't come from Jonah. And so because it didn't come from Jonah, that means he didn't create it. Let me say that again. The word came to Jonah, so that means it didn't come from Jonah. And because it didn't come from Jonah, that means he didn't create it. So that means he can't approach the word with the entitled mindset. And so in this, in this new season, some of us are already in that new season. Some of us are crossing over to this new season. But I'm so glad that God's principles, they, they stand wherever we're at. And so this, this principle, this, these, these, this idea of stewardship is very important that we, that we realize it. Because ultimately this was God's original intent when he created man. He created us to be overseers. He created us to be managers. He created us to be supervisors. So in this season, stewardship has to be very close to us. That's good. Because That's if stewardship good. isn't close to us, we'll act like it's ours. And when we act like it's ours, we won't do what we're supposed to do with it. Teach, 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 teach. Woo! Teach, teach. Stewardship. <laughs> he, talking, he talking to us all. <laughs> stewardship, stewardship is the idea of managing or overseeing all that God gives to us by his grace. A steward realizes that everything has been placed in front of them by grace, and through grace, they oversee it. A steward doesn't just manage money. They manage their relationships with their relationship with the Father, their relationship with themselves, then their relationship with others, their relationship with their resources, and, and let's take it a step further, their relationship with the season that they are in. So, so, so this means that everything that the Father has given to us, he intends for us to manage it. He, he intends for us to manage it. And it's a colloquialism for my age. I know I'm, everybody may not be in my generation, but there's a colloquialism that says, I got it out the mud, right? Some of y'all know about Kevin Gates. Some, some, of y'all, some of y'all, brother right here, he know about, okay. Okay. But see, the, the, the colloquialism of getting it out the mud, it means that you got it, you got it out the mud. You, create, you got yourself and you built yourself up by your own bootstraps. Nobody else helped you. Right. You self-made, right. Right? right? Your family didn't help you. Uh-oh. Your friends didn't help you. And if you're thinking like that, you for sure saying God didn't help you, <laughs> right? So, 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 so this this idea is rooted. This idea is rooted in entitlement. It, it's it's rooted in ownership. We are owners. It's nothing that God has, it's nothing that we have in our life right now that we created, right? Mm -hmm. So 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 this this concept, this idea of stewardship is very important. And if you go to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 10, this is a great managerial statement. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 10. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 10. I'm going to go there. This is the Apostle Paul speaking, and he's giving us some insight on stewardship. He's giving us some insight on how to be a manager. And verse 10, it says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. So already he's saying that he is defined by grace. People don't define him. His circumstances don't define him. His spouse doesn't define him. His friends doesn't define him. But he's defined by grace. 
grace defines him. He says, but by grace, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain. Okay, so Paul realizes that he didn't get it out the mud. <laughs> he, he, reali he, he realizes that he didn't do anything. But watch this. He says, on the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, <laughs> though it was not I. But he says, I worked harder than any of them. So this means that, that, gr that just because we have grace, that doesn't mean that we don't oversee or work over what God has given us. That's good. That's right. Grace empowers us to work. We don't work for grace. We work because of grace. Yeah. Right? We work because of grace. And it's, and it's very important that we all realize that grace is not a license to be lazy. Grace isn't, grace isn't a license to be lazy. Right? So, so we <laughs> so grace, grace isn't a license to be lazy, okay? But watch this. He, he, he turns around and he says, I'm not defined by my work. I know I work, but I'm not defined by my work. I know I'm an athlete, but I'm not defined by being an athlete. He says, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. So this is a great managerial statement that Paul is trying to tell us and reveal to us. He's telling us and showing us that, okay, yes, the Lord is gracious, but that doesn't mean we don't work. But because we're working, that doesn't mean we get grace. God, God is gracious regardless of what we do. So, so we can't necessarily see grace is right here and then work is right here. See, because we're people, and we're so wishy-washy, we don't always work. Right. <laughs> we, don't, we, don't, we don't always work, right? We don't, we don't always do what we're supposed to do. But God does. The Father does. And so we can't mix grace with our works, but we have to realize that grace, is, it empowers us to work. Yeah. So a steward understands obedience. A steward understands obedience because grace plus obedience, it equals multiplication. See, a lot of times, we, <laughs> a lot of times we wonder, we wonder why, or I'm wondering why, I'm not seeing the multiplication take place in my life. It ain't because God isn't being gracious. <laughs> it's because we're not moving on the grace that He gives us to work. Am I managing my relationship with the Father? Am I managing my relationship with others? But first, am I managing my relationship with myself? Because if I can't, if I can't manage my relationship with myself, how can I expect to manage my relationship with others? The word didn't belong to Jonah. Now, and it says, arise. Go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it, for their, for their evil has come up before me. A steward is okay with going to a place of inconvenience. A steward is okay with going to a place of inconvenience, of dealing with a, per, a person that, get, that, that causes inconvenience, of dealing with a season that may feel inconvenient because a steward realizes that it's not about me. It's about what the, see, it was, it was the father's will that wanted to get to the Ninevites. That's good. Mm -hmm. It wasn't Jonah. Jonah was just a part of the equation. Mm -hmm. Right? He says, arise, go to Nineveh. Now, Nineveh was an evil city. It was, it was Israel's enemy, right? So let's, let's go to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verse 43. Matthew chapter 5, verse 43. Now, here's some, here's some context on this. This is Jesus speaking. This is the, the Sermon on the Mount. Okay, and Jesus is, is speaking about a kingdom lifestyle. 
he's, he's speaking about how we should live as kingdom citizens. He's speaking about how we should live as stewards. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He, he's, he's talking about the landscape of the kingdom, the environment, the mindset, the culture of the kingdom. This is the context behind what we are getting ready to, to read. Verse 43, he says, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? <laughs> and if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? You, therefore, must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. He says, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. So he's trying to break down this mindset that says, I'm going to walk to things that are convenient to me. I'm going to just deal with things that are convenient to me. Because ultimately, what this, this mindset, this idea, what Jesus is saying is rooted in is that, I'm only going to do things that are convenient to me. Right. He says you should love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Right? Mm -hmm. but, then he, but, he, but then he says, but I say to you, love your enemies. In other words, embrace inconvenient situations. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes those inconvenient situations aren't the enemy. It's the father trying to work on the inner me. Sometimes those inconvenient situations, sometimes those people. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> help us all, Jesus. <laughs> Lord, we need, a, <laughs> we need your grace. Sometimes those seasons, see, 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 see Nineveh, Nineveh represents a season. Nineveh just isn't a place, it's a season. That's good, that's good. See, sometimes the Lord will send us to these seasons, and he will tell us to sit in this season Woo! because that season isn't just about you, it's about somebody else. Wow. What season is the Lord telling us to sit in, and we're thinking it's about us, but it's really about somebody connected to us? Jesus. <laughs> Change ahead, managing the new season. Because the seasons that we face, it isn't just about us. Our obedience isn't just tied to us. How do we know this? Through one man's disobedience, sin came into the world. Through another man's obedience, we all had the opportunity to be saved. So this, this, this is Jesus teaching us, okay, I, I know, I know, being in that place of comfortability is comfortable. But, he, but Jesus is saying, I don't want you to live there. I, 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 don't, I don't want you to live there. Okay, practically, practically, what does this look like? Okay, if I'm, going to the, if I'm going to the store and it may be inconvenient for me to call the, the person at the cash register that, by their name, but this is what Jesus is telling us to do. Jesus is telling us to uh, approach this life with the mindset of, okay, I'm not going to worry about me because I'm okay. But my focus should be on the Father's will. Watch this. Jesus said, I came down from heaven to do the will of the one who sent me. Meaning that it wasn't about people. It was about the Father's will. But the Father's will dealt with people. That's good. How many times are we putting the Father's will over people? How many times are we putting people over the Father's will? Because the Father's will also means for us to take care of ourselves. Yes. Stewardship. <laughs> Stewardship. Now, for those online, <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't say... Forget about other people, okay? 
I didn't, I didn't say just worry about, I didn't say get into this, this self-preservation mindset and say, okay, I'm not, I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is that the Father encouraged us to walk in wisdom because wisdom says, I can't give out of an empty cup. Are we willing to approach the season even though it's inconvenient? How much time do I have? Okay. Now it says, but Jonah rose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. Notice, this word Joppa, it means beautiful. Right? It means beautiful. So that so so just be careful when this the place that we're going to looks beautiful. Because sometimes the place that the Father is taking us doesn't necessarily look beautiful. Ooh, Proverbs tells us that beauty is fleeting. Right. Charm is deceitful. Yeah. So just because it's comfortable to us. That doesn't necessarily mean we're supposed to, because, because, watch this, watch this. It says, he went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare. Anytime we step out of God's will, we'll always be doing it out of our own strength. He had to pay the fare. He had to pay it. And if we stay in the Father's will, it's more about grace. Grace empowers us. Grace gives us the strength to go. But when we step, see, see Tarshish? And Nineveh represents the spirit and the flesh. Wow. See, it, it, it was easy. See, the flesh would tell us the route that we're going on is beautiful. <laughs> right. Always. The flesh would tell us that, okay, I'm going this way. And because it looks right, I'm doing the right thing. There is a way that seems right to a man. But in the end, it leads to destruction. Stewardship, this is still about the mindset of a steward. Because if I'm a steward, I will only go where the Father tells me to go. I will only do what the Father tells me to do. Because I realize that my life doesn't belong to me. Now, I I know, (laughs) I know I know that may be hard for us, but that's the truth. Because when, when we said yes, this is what we said yes to. <laughs> I know we didn't know that in the beginning. <laughs> but this is, this, is, this is what we said yes to. This is what we, this is what we said yes to. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. But... The Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea. Now, we can't necessarily assess that the Lord hurled the wind because of Jonah. But we can go through to the next next chapter, and Jonah is on the boat, and they're going crazy because they're in the tempestuous storm, and they don't know what to do. And they're asking Jonah what to do because they've cast a lot to find out who the evil is coming from. And so now, (laughs) and so now the lot. The lot is on Jonah, right? And so they're asking Jonah these questions, and Jonah responds and says, I'm a Hebrew of Hebrew. I fear the Lord, the one who, who, who's over the seas and the dry land. And then they ask him, what shall he do, right? And then, and then Jonah tells them, he says, pick me up and hurl me into the sea. Then the sea will quiet down for you. For I know it's because of me that this great tempest has come upon you. Now, we can equate from this statement that it has something to do with Jonah. But what Jonah said is true, but it's not necessarily true. Because if we go back to the beginning in chapter 1, verse 1, it says, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh. So it's three, it's three, uh, it's three people within this equation. It's the father, it's Jonah, and it's Nineveh. So it isn't just about Jonah. But you, but, but, you, but you see where his mindset, where his thinking is at, based upon what he says. Wow. That's why he yes. fleed in the first place. Yes. 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 Stewardship. Jesus. 
That's why he fleed in the first place, right? So it says, but the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea. Now, here's what's interesting. Here's what's interesting is that Jonah's decision could have possibly caused somebody else to be involved in something that they didn't necessarily have to be involved in. It says the mariners were afraid and each cried out to his God. See, when we, when we don't take our decisions seriously, we have innocent bystanders. See, our decisions, going back to what we just said earlier, our obedience, it doesn't just affect us. Our decisions don't just affect us. It affects other people. This is a picture of sometimes how kids, they get caught up in they're just their parents' their decision. This is a picture of sometimes how we get caught up in other people's decision making. That's, that's a real thing. But we have the choice not to let that be the last say-so. It says, then the mariners were afraid, then the mariners were afraid, and each cried out to his God. Now, we can take, we can take some insight, or we can pull some insight from the mariners when it comes to how we should approach this season. Are we serious, and are we managing our emotions correctly? How, how are we managing our emotions? Because watch this. Because the mariners were afraid they end up throwing cargo off of the ship that didn't even have to be thrown off the ship. See, it wasn't even about the cargo. It was about Jonah. But you see, because their mindset was on a little G-God, they didn't have the understanding or they didn't approach this thing as a steward. And because they didn't approach this thing as a steward, they end up throwing away something that never was meant for them to throw uh, wait. What are we throwing away that the Lord is, is saying keep? But because we're approaching this thing with an entitled mindset, we, we aren't owners. It says, then the mariners were afraid and each cried out to his God. It, it's interesting how fear will lead you to do things that make sense. But in the end, they are not connected with faith. See, it made, it made sense to the mariners to throw this cargo off of the ship, but that wasn't what needed to be done, right? It says, and they thought, and they heard the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. But Jonah had gone down into the inner part of the ship and had lain down and was fast asleep. Now, now this, is, this is very important. It says, but Jonah had gone down into the inner part of the ship and had lain down and was fast asleep. So let's just paint this picture. This man is on a boat. It's a tempestuous wind going on, and he trying to go to sleep. That don't, that don't even make sense. How you, how everybody in the house screaming this a fire, and you just laying down in your bed, you just not going to move. That, I mean, that's just logically. Log logically, that doesn't make sense. But, but here's, here's what's interesting is that sometimes we can co confuse passivity for peace. Mm. See, you could look at this and say, okay, Jonah would sleep just like how Jesus would sleep. Right. See. But, but Jesus was in a place of peace. Jonah was in a place of passivity. Passivity will cause you to be paralyzed. Because you are, trying to, you are trying to move based upon what you see. You're trying to move based upon what you feel. You're trying to move based upon what other people may see. Wow. The, the Lord's heart for us is to never be passive. But it isn't to be aggressive. But it's to be assertive. Assertive is that fine balance. See, peace does not lead us to pass. Really, really what, what passivity comes from, it comes from fear. Mm. What fear comes from is pride. Mm. What pride comes from is looking at myself. Mm. What looking at myself means is that I'm not walking by faith, I'm walking by sight. Right. Stewardship. Yeah. Stewardship. 
Am I taking my decision seriously? Am I taking my decision seriously? Managing the new season that we are in. We are all approaching a new season. Some of us are already in that season. So, so it's very important that we don't allow our souls to try to take us back to where God has brought us from. Because that's, that soul can get messy. <laughs> that, that's, that, that soul can try to take you back to those unhealthy memories. How am I managing the new season that I'm in? Here, here, here's, what's, here's what's interesting, too, is that there is a great rapper that I know by the name of C. Mighty. <laughs> and, Amen. Amen. and look, he prophesies to us about passivity. He teaches us about passivity, right? He says, okay, I'm back active. Right. He said, I made up my mind, and I swear I'm done being passive. Watch this. He says, I made up my mind. That means in order for me to manage the new season, I have to manage my mind. That's it. <laughs> because I can be in a new place, but I can still be in an old flame. Because of where my mind is at. Managing the new season. How am I managing the new season? Am I, am I willing to approach inconvenient moments? And am I serious? Am I serious? So, Father, we thank you for your word. We ask, Father, that you help us to... Just help us. <laughs> help us. Help us all, Lord. <laughs> Lord, help us all. Because we know that your heart for us is to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask or imagine. We know that you spoke fruitfulness and multiplication over our lives. But, Father, help us to realize that we have a partnership in that. Help, 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 us, help us to realize that, yes, you give us grace, but you give us grace to do something. And the increase comes from you. So, Father, we are all approaching new seasons. Some of us are already in that season. So, Father, we ask that you give us the wisdom that we need. Fill us afresh with all the wisdom and the understanding that your spirit gives so that we might live a life worthy and pleasing unto you. We thank you that you equip us with everything good to do your will. But if we don't act on what you equipped us with, then. But we need your grace. We thank you for your grace. And we thank you for all the great things that you are getting ready to do. We thank you for all the things that you've already done. And so we just look to you. We look away from ourselves. We look away from what other people may say. We look away from, from even what our situations may say. Even though the season may not start off how we thought it would go, that doesn't mean that the season isn't still going to end how you said it would end. Even though the season may not necessarily look how we thought it would be, we thank you that we can still trust you and keep going on because we know that you are working all things out for the good of those who love God and who are called according to your purpose. But we thank you that it's just not about the good things that we think are good, but it's about being conformed into the image of your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for how you're conforming us more into the image of your son with this upcoming season. We thank you for how you conform us more into your son with the people that you bring in our life. We thank you for how you are conforming us more into the image of your son with our relationship with you. So we just choose to look to you. 
And we thank you, Father, that we will begin to approach this life that you have given us afresh with a new mindset of management, with a new mind, mindset of stewardship. Because nothing that we see is ours. Nothing that we have is ours. If it came to us, it did not come from us. So, Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.